Hello, I hope you're good. I'm totally fine. And uh, I had a very nice correspondence with Ian Waters, who is the mastermind behind MASH in Maya and maybe other pieces of software. And I had a correspondence with him because I wanted to send him my appreciation for his work. And I had a question about this. What does this have to do with MASH? Actually, that was not my question. I can understand it has to do something with MASH. But um, if you, that's uh, ianwaters.co.uk. That's the blog of uh, Ian Waters. And here we have, I give you the, the link to this uh, page here. And we have MASH and Python and Meshes, part one, normals. And what this tool is about, it paints trees according to the normals of the plane sounds complicated isn't too complicated really in order to make this work ian provided us with this python script python is a programming language and this is the script basically it means that um, uh, you can implant this code into maya and then get something out which looks similar to this i thought so first of all um, let us click here so we get a plain text and then I select the whole code here. I copied it. So the first thing I did with this code was totally wrong and that's what I wrote to Ian. This does not work. Why is that? I remember quite well the time when Autodesk introduced Python into Maya. Here you have MEL, which is the generic Maya programming language. And if you click here, you see the script editor, and it has a MEL and a Python tab. So what I did was I pasted the code into the Python tab. Here it is. And now I executed the code, which you do by pressing on the arrow. And then you get an error message. Lots of error messages, actually. All lines in red cannot be executed because there's a problem. Well, Ian said to me, you need a mesh in order to do this. And if I had read his block entry precisely, I would have known that I need more than a mesh. I need a little bit of a pre-setup. And that's what we'll do now. And at the end, I'll show you a little bit of tweaking the code in order to give you a taste for coding yourself, maybe. OK, so let's get started with the new scene. The new scene needs a plane where we plant our plants onto. And we go to polymodeling and create such a surface here. We can go to polyplane and pump the width and height up to this. We can uncheck the grid on the ground now because we have a grid now. We can add a little bit more subdivisions here to get more detail in order to plant interesting sections. And we give it a color, a new material, it doesn't have to be shiny, so a lambit is fine. And I think a, a ramp is good with some green in it. In order to see it, we need to check this. Currently, it goes from black to white, but we want it to go from green to white, and maybe a little bit more green here. OK, let us uh, deform it now. You go to the Mesh Tools. And here are the sculpting tools. Lots of them, really. Just pick any of them. The smooth tool doesn't make sense now because it's smooth already and relax as well. Uh, doesn't uh, do anything here, but the sculpt tool is fine. You get something like this. Maybe you get something like this. And this is just the size of the brush which paints uh, mountains now. So let's go do this. And that's basically quite interesting. <laughs> and uh, maybe a little bit here. Yeah, that's fine. So we can exit the tool or just 
pick the this icon here which it's the key Q on the keyboard now why not smooth this whole thing uh, average vertices this is okay now we need a plant of course we could use a polygon primitive now but a plant is quite sexy really and uh, let's do this uh, generate and here you have the paint effects tools just let's get a brush and the brush in this case is going to be a tree or a flower whatever uh, since I don't want to really copy what Ian did here <laughs> let's pick a pick a flower 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 flowers are here for example a sunflower or a rose I think it's not necessary to drag it into the scene really let's just make one plant here it is I think that's fine yeah okay it's called a stroke of roses here and that's what it looks like if we deselect it that's what it looks like here actually we could add another one go to generate get brush now let's get uh, on the flowers a sunflower and do the same thing maybe in the same place that's our sunflower now so we have two flowers now so the flowers are strange things really strange objects they are paint effects objects which have special features which we don't have to discuss now uh, beautiful things really but in order to make them work together with mesh we need to convert them to meshes and uh, that's what we're going to do now we uh, select the sunflowers stroke and the roses stroke all together and we go to modify and convert because we're converting them now and we convert paint effects to polygons now we can delete the previous paint effects uh, objects and we have here the sunflower mesh group and here the roses mesh group and actually we can group them into one and press control is it control or command I think it's control G make a new group so the group has two groups the sunflower group and the roses gr group anyway the meshes are down here it's all meshes so they can be handled well by mesh in order to make them work with mesh we need to put the plant group into the center of the scene and let's do this right here it's currently actually the pivot is in the center of the scene because any new group is being created at the center of the scene but the plants are here because we painted them here and uh, we need to move them back to the center that's where they are now maybe it helps to press insert to move the pivot to the center too and the cru more crucial thing is I think that we need to actually freeze the translation parameters to zero and with this object meaning the group selected you go to modify and freeze transformations just check what's happening now with the transform edit attributes they will all go to zero and that means this object is for Maya an object created at the center and that's that's where it sits and that's imp important for mesh as well okay next step um, go to this icon here with the group selected we create a mesh here it is and here we have roses and sunflowers all together uh, 10 pieces now we need to go to mesh distribute and distribute them on this plane and we do this by uh, clicking instead of linear they're in a row currently we choose the mesh currently Maya doesn't know which mesh they're supposed to be planted on but we'll do this in a second so we get a sort of an error message the Maya wants us to select an input mesh here it is it accepts mesh when you hover the mouse over it you see 
it accepts mesh, the input mesh. And this is a middle mouse thing now. So the mesh is the polyplane, this one. Yeah? And if you want a middle mouse, drag it onto here, it's gone. So you need to go back to mesh. Yeah, that's where we want to land it. And not select it, just middle mouse click it and move it here. Okay, we have a random distribution of 10 flowers on our surface. We have them in the valley here, on the, on the slope here, on the slope here and here, and in the valleys here and everywhere. Now, we want more of them, and I enter a shocking number now, and the beauty of MASH, one of the beauties of MASH, is that it handles such large numbers very well. Let's see what's happening now. Yeah, 3,000, actually 6,000 plants because we have roses and sunflowers all together. But basically it's a nice and even distribution, which by the way we could render using Arnold now, what we won't do now. So now is the time for, and I might like to remind you of this script. We still have it in our copy clipboard. Go to mesh. This is our mesh network. We only have one. That's the flowers distribution on that surface. And we have currently only the distribute node. And now we add a Python node. It's a programming node. You click here, add Python node. And what happens now is you see a little bit of code here and the flowers do things which you don't want really. It might look good in some cases but flowers need to be planted on the ground and not live in the air. That's why you select this and delete it. If you execute the Python script now nothing happens. It all goes back to normal. And there's no script in here. But you can paste the script from Ian Waters now in here. Here it is. And whatever it does, we let it run. So let's run this script now. And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Ian's script selects the distribution in a way that the plants only grow on flat surfaces. So on all the slopes here you don't have plants. But you have them down here because there's only a very small slope here. So there seems to be a tolerance. They grow on the hill because it's rather flat up there. And they grow in the valley. So that's what this script does. The script is not very long. It's 46 lines long and we're not going into scripting now. Python is a very powerful language which you can use in many contexts, not just in Maya or MASH. Uh, most of the code consists of definitions and basically it extracts the normals of the of this plane and tells the flowers not to grow on parts of the surface where the normals are far away from upright from vertical and if you scroll down here you see the delta angle is greater than 20 if it's greater than 20 then don't show any flowers or plants or objects. And in the one direction, that's the Y direction which goes up here. This green thing is Y, it's the second parameter in the vector world. If we put in one here, so we have a um, vector which goes up and in Z direction, which is the blue one, going to the right now. And if we execute the script now, watch what happens to the flowers. 
So now we have a distribution of the flowers which are only in the direction of x going this way, this is x, and y. Let's go back to the original. I just wanted to show you how this um, normals parameter is extracted. It is about normals upwards, orthogonal, pointing to the sky. So that's what this 0, 1, 0 means. And now let's go down to the 20. That's the delta angle, that's the tolerance. Actually, Ian describes what it does. He writes, the angle is in degrees, so the result is if the difference between this normal and up is more than 20 degrees, turn the point off. So it's here definitely more than 20 degrees, so it turns the points off, so nothing is being planted on the slopes now. Let's change this tolerance from 20 to 5. We run the script. So we have only plants in rather flat areas. And the contrary, of course, is 50. Let's run the script again. So now the plants start growing on the slopes um, because the tolerance is much higher now. Here it's very steep. That's why no flowers grow here. Let's go to, say, 80. We will almost have a random distribution all over the whole field now. Let's go back to, say, 8. So very tiny tolerance. So we have only very few flowers planted on the top of the hill. And nice flowers here. So this is basically an intro into Python scripting, how to input the script, and you find lots of scripts in the internet, and uh, especially by Ian Waters. And uh, the next lesson really in his uh, blog is about ch changing colors accordingly. Okay, there's a message coming in. Never mind. Um, and if you read the script, it's very well described. All the gray things are annotations. That's where Ian explains what, what's being done here. Most of the, uh, the code is, as I said before, definition, but you can play with the parameters and try to understand how it works and write, sooner or later, your own Python code.